uh, Dr. Fanzi. Fan leads the research and on advanced computational tools on data science technology that can help us to manage a safe, comfortable, and healthy environment. She has over 25 year experience in data simulation and mathematical modeling technologies. Her main original contributions center on cutting edge techniques of predictive modeling, machine learning, data simulation techniques, reduced, reduced order modeling, ROM, adaptive observation. Dr. Fan and her group first applied deep learning tech, uh, techniques on uh, ROM to real-time spatial temporal prediction of nonlinear fluid flow. The applications are mainly focused on atmospheric pollution, ocean, mood phase flow, and environmental problems. And so the talk of uh, her talk is about environmental problems. Thank you, thank you a lot for your to to agree to 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 to, to do this presentation today to us. And uh, also I am to 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 thanks to Dr. Funk to be a, a organizer of this course here. And uh, I would like also to thanks Dr. Vu, uh, Mrs. Kai, and Professor Tota that help us as a co-hosters to, to help us uh, for this uh, taking, help us to the Zoom, the Zoom uh, platform. Please, Dr. Fan. Okay. Your talk. Uh yeah, thank you very much, Horado, for your introductory introduction. And a special thank you for your really hard work on organizing this training course. Uh, I think, I hope everyone enjoy it. And uh, so today my talk will work on real-time predictive modeling, machine learning, and data simulation in environmental problem. So first will be the motivations. So, um, in our model simulations, what we really concern are accuracy and uh, rap, uh, you know, the efficiencies. So we would like the model result, have the accurate results and the meanwhile we, it's very fast model. So because you know, we need the fast model for get a really, really quick, quick, quick response at the uh, emerging situations. So, and especially for real time predictions. And so this is the, the framework of the predicting modeling. And the, 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 they are the type of the two type of the model. One is the physical model. Physical model is depend, physical model is used the uh, differential equation to represent the complex, the fluid dynamic, the physical problem. And then you use the, the some, you choose some numerical scheme to describe a, a, this differential, the, diff, uh, the partial differential equations. And then you run a model and choose the uh, mesh size, the time step size, and then you run the model and get your results. However, there always some uncertainty in, in your physical model. So basically your always, and also the error, the accuracy of your model depends on your numeric skin you choose. And uh, also it sometimes it takes a lot of time, CPU time and that issues. So another type of the model is a data driving model. It's purely depend on the data. So they, you use the larger of a data set and they use some uh, technology, you know, for example, machine learning and build up your model, extract the fluid, extract the fluid dynamic future from your larger data set. And then you get, you can use that model, to, the data driving model to predict. So there are a number of the application area for the prediction model. So it, for example, optimal control, uh, risky as assessment, and decision make and uh, for especially for real time uh, predictions. Or you can apply to air pollution, uh, environment issues, atmosphere, the model, ocean, chemical, and other multi phase issues and, and uh, nuclear as well. 
And, uh, and another issue we need concern is you know, if you use the data and uh, the, what's the quality of the data and do you want to optimize choose the data you have? So there's another topic I will touch at the end of this lecture. So again, you can see, so it, on the left side is the physical modeling, on the right side is the data science, is the data driving model. As I said before, so no matter you know your how accuracy of your, your physical model, you always have some uncertainty and the model error. And also in your data as well, and you always have some error in your measurements. So is there any way we can compile together? And it's all, so that's what we can for the optimal uh, your hybrid methods or compile more physical model and the data driving model together. So for example, you can introduce as we in the last few days we keep uh, top, that main topic is data simulation. So data simulation is introduce your measurement into your physical model to to improve the accuracy of the model. So there are a number of the methods you you have we have if you already. Have get some analogy in the past few days. And uh, so now, to, now I'm to, I will leave my talk, I would like. So in my talk, I will focus on the machine learning and the data simulations. So machine learning is the kind of the part of the uh, artificial intelligence and the deep learning is used that it's also part of a machine learning use the neural network to analyze different factors with the structure and the, which is similar to the human neural systems. And they use these complex neural network systems to learn the fluid dynamic features. So this is uh, machine learning, data simulation and the model reductions. So machine learning combined with the data simulation, we can predict the modeling. We use the uncertainty analysis. We can, if you combine with data simulation technology, you can improve the accuracy of your machine learning model and the physical model as well. You can, because it's fast, machine learning model is fast, so you can use the optimal control sensitivity analysis, and especially for the real-time operational prediction. And if you, and the, for the data uh, simulation or the machine learning, you may need to deal with a larger data set. So you may introduce the model reduction uh, technology in, inside and uh, reduce your, uh, your data size, uh, the dimensional size. And uh, so I will touch that in my talk. So my talk will divide two parts. So first part focus on machine learning. And the second part, I will focus on the how they combine data simulation and machine learning together for real-time prediction. And so it's our view of the machine learning. Uh, machine learning is in 1941, it's the first time of the in the paper machine, the machine learning we could use the fluid dynamic problem, for example, the turbulence, only machine that. And actually it's on, on the, introduced to the, the fluid dynamic problem is from in the 1989. It's first applied the deep learning methods for the data compression for the fluid dynamic problem. And more recently, and the people pay more attention to the application of machine learning to the fluid dynamic fuel. The advantage of the data we use the machine learning is that machine learning they can, uh, they, uh, technology can, it's very powerful for extracting the flu uh, futures without knowing the physical processes, actually without the uh, uh, physical model equations. And be purely depend on the data. And the, the, the you, I said, and uh, so it's, we can use that for the operator control, for the subgrade model, and for example, the turbulent model, and then we can use that to feed up the mission, mission data, and especially uh, the aim is the real-time forecasting, online forecasting, because it's faster, but we, we also, even faster, we want to keep the accuracy of the model. So I will discuss later. So what's the challenge of the machine learning, mode, or machine learning model? So 
nonlinear fluid dynamic problem. So for the nonlinear fluid dynamic model, you, you need to learn the spatial temporal fluid dynamic. And that's very really challenging, especially in the high resolution, the, spatial, the high spatial resolution for the real time, it's very challenging. And also is some uncertainty in the model and uh, for the real time uh, prediction, it's a big issue is because you use the, the data, big data, no matter data you have, it's uh, available in the, in the past time, in the past year, but you use that data to predict in the future. How can you guarantee your machine learning model, you know, can I extract, you know, can predict what happened in the future? That's a key, that's a very, it's really challenging in the machine learning model. And the, another one is that you have to deal with a larger data set. I will, I will in, the, in later of my lecture, I will introduce the model reductions. And uncertainty, again, uncertainty in the, in the data and the error in the data as well. So, and the second part is the, you know, the, so deep learning approach, I will introduce the, so deep learning approach, we could do a class for the supervised learning and supervised learning, and it's the same as supervised learning between a reinforcement learning. And the, for example, the supervised learning is your, you have input with label, and then you also you have the target output, and from your input and uh, label the input and output, and so you can then back you know you can then from the label the input, but I I should was the learning is you learn by your yourself, basically is is input and the output you don't know what happened in the output. So you learn by yourself, but the, the semi super uh, supervised learning is combined is the the middle. So you use the part of the labeled input and use the unlabeled input part of an unlabeled input, and then combine together for the to learn the, uh, what happened in the future in the output. Well, what's the principle behind the? the machine learning model. And uh, let's look at the governor equation one. So this is a very general equation for the nonlinear flow dynamic problem. It's partial different equations. Uh, mu is input. Input is could be the, the solution from a lot, you know, temperature, for example, from a last time level. And the y is output. Okay, output also could be the next time, uh, temperature at the next time level or its velocity, whatever. And so it uh, also have the boundary conditions or uh, initial conditions also, you know, that always in include the inputs. And the X is coordinate, X, Y, Z. And the special coordinate and the T is time. So we rewrite this uh, equation one, uh, to the equation two, equation very, very, very general way. So basically it's mu input, y is output, and the P represents the relationship between the input mu and y. So what happened with machine learning model? Machine learning model, you have, you, you have a lot of data and uh, they, this data could represent the relationship between the, the mu and the y and input and output. So you use this data and use some, for example, neural network, and then the training, and you get your training the machine learning model to explode the relationship between the input and output. Oh, so this is a neural network. So neural network is on the left is the input X, for example, yeah, and then output is Y. So you can see there is a different layer, the so input layer, output layer, and the latent layer. And the between the convolutional layer, and at each convolutional layer, you have neutral, number of neutrons, and the, the, the relationship, the connection between the neutrons is the age. And then we use, we choose some activation functions to link this neutral to represent the 
uh, relationship, nonlinear relationship between the, this neutron at a different uh, convolutional layer. And so with this nonlinear relationship, So how to do that? So we need to define a loss functions. So for example, this Y's out output and Y zero is the true solutions. So we want to training this new line network. New line network has a width. So this parameter you have different layer and width and the residual. So this is the parameters. So we want training purpose is we try to find the optimal of this optimal of these parameters and to for the minimum minimum of the loss functions and then find the suitable of the parameters. And this is so and activation functions is represented by here. The sigma is activation functions. You can choose the different type of activation functions. And it's also it's a case dependent. Uh, there are class, uh, three class by uh, uh, the neural network. So feed forward neural network and the re recurrent neural network and the C convolutional neural network. And this RNN is really good to uh, capture the sequence information in the input in the data set. So uh, in other words, it's good for real-time predictions. And the CAN, convolutional uh, neural network, is good to catch the special distribution features. And so if you combine together, it will be good to, you know, to catch it. Sorry jump by cell. So it will be catch the special and uh, temporal distribution. So there are some issues in the machine learning model. For example, is our fitting. Our fitting is means, you know, they, you can see here, is when you learn, when you, uh, when you learn the fluid dynamic feature in the training data, it cut, it captured the, the detail of the fluid dynamic real uh, uh, to, uh, detail of the real fluid dynamic features, but meanwhile it captured noise as well. So it's, you can see it's fitting or you know, fitting uh, our fitting is we call it our fitting. So if you use this machine learning for the unseen case in the future, for example, predict future in the unseen case, you cannot get a good results. So. So there are some solution for to overcome the our fitting in the machine learning modeling. So you you can have the parallelization uh, uh, tense to limit it of the, the 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 you know how to learn the detail of the fluid dynamic futures, and then you can use uh, you some data for the uh, for the validations, and also you can use some of the you know some technology estimate the accuracy, for example, key fault calls, validation methods. And, and another, another uh, the method is the, oh, you know, another issue is underfitting. For example, this is a nonlinear issues. However, we, we when the learning, the only learning is used, you know, afterwards learning, you only use the, the, the linear this relationship, so that's underfitting. So, so in this case, you need to increase of your data, or you have may need to change your machine learning methods. Different use different machine learning methods. Wow! Well, another key issue is the one is in grid. The grid disappeared. So if you want to optimize of the, you, you want to the minimum of the loss functions, you, for the minimum optimize the par parameters, you, you need to calculate the degree of the loss functions. However, for example, even your uh, back propagation, uh, propagation, and then grid you the, at each layer, convolution layer, and uh, the layer, the grid you the, the become of at the beginning is okay, it's some value, but when the through back propagated, the gradient of loss function will become smaller and smaller and then disappeared. 
So in this case, you cannot get the good results. You know, you basically your machine learning training is stopped. So we uh, so we say it's the one uh, you know grid is disappeared. So there are a number of solutions we list here. You can choose a different you know the non saturation activation functions L, uh, LU, and you can use the grid club methods, and you can use the uh, you can. You can choose the initial, the proper initial weights before the training. And another good method is, is LSTN. LST you recall is it's a long short term memory. It's a special type of RAN. So basically, RAN is the, they have the cell. And in the cell, you have the input gate. And you have four data gate, and also you have the output gate. But you can see that the, the grid that you, you can use the four get uh, for get gate to control the control the grid the value. So in this case, you can you can avoid that uh, you know that uh, the validating the grid the issues. So this is the LCTM LC method. LSTM method is really good for the, I think it's quite powerful real time predictions. I just give you one example here. Um, so this is uh, in Thailand. So this is a river basin, the two river basins. The, we have the stream flow measurement at the, at the, green, the, the green locations. So here we have the stream flow measurement, and this red triangle is represent the ring gauges. So from here we have the ring for uh, measurements, and these big areas. And so we, what we want to train is, can we use this the ring for measurement as an input and the training output and predict what happened. The ring four at this lo two at these locations, and for the monthly, uh, monthly and the daily uh, forecasting. So as I said, and uh, before, so this in this case input is the ring four data, and the output we are string for uh, uh, value. And so this, we can input uh, from last time, the, you know, so we have the input and the training data and training model, and we can predict the stream, for, uh, stream flow at the next time's level. And afterwards we can, and the predicted, the, the, the predicted the stream flow, we are get as an input and plus the, the ring for, data and the, the, as input and then go to the training the machine learning model and then predict the, the next the stream flow at the next uh, the time level and the go on go on like and the training periods so we have the data from the two, uh, 1974 to the 2004 and so we use that with a monthly uh, forecasting and the daily forecasting. So, uh, so training data, we can use the, uh, from this period and the validation data, uh, val validation periods from 2007 to the 2011. And so we can use part of the with training and part of our validations. And then let's look at the result. This is the strategy of the, our machine learning model. So input that is doing for and plus and then it's output is string for, and then at some stage we can use the, the, the output from machine learning from the previous time level and as input plus the, uh, uh, plus the ring for data, and then we can predict the next time uh, string for floor. So here you can see green represent the input is ring for a measurement, and then on the bottom represent is the screen flow, the output of the screen flow from the machine learning model. And here we use the different type of machine learning mode, uh, methods. 
So we choose the, the AN and another method we choose the LSTN. We want to compare which, which model is better. And so it's the black line represent the measurement. So we compare our results with the measurement and then the, the orange represents its result from AAN machine learning model and the blue represents ASTN model results. So you can see both quite good fitting with the measurement. And then if you look at the correlations uh, co co coefficient, you can see, and then for the AN, the co uh, correlations reached to the 0.76, and for LSTN, which the more kind of high is the 8.86. And this is another measurement, uh, the, the, the error analysis. So this IMSE and this is co 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 correlationship. And this is another measurement. So we can see it's a compare with the both uh, the, so basically com uh, for the comparison, and then we can see the LSTA is much, it's better than the, the methods, AAN. So this damage results again is for different case. And so it's a, again, it's compared with the measurement and the black is measurement and the, it's the, the blue is LSTA and this ring for, this is a, for the monthly string for floor forecasting use the STN and AAN. So this is one example, and then it's a multiple, it uh, use a different, again, a different one. So this is the AAN results, this is the LSTN results during the period 2004 to the 2012, it's a monthly forecast results. And now I want to introduce another uh, method to generally advise the uh, neural network and we call it GAN. I think uh, the Sala in the last lecture, the Sala machined this method. So uh, the, uh, this method original is uh, introduced by the Google fellow and it have proved this method is really good to reproduce the high resolution image. And this method is kind of, you can think about it's a game, it's a, it's a zero shoe, it's a zero sum, zero sum game uh, played by the two players. One is a generator and the one is a discriminator. And there is a two neural network for the each of them. It's a generator, a generative the neural network, and it's a dis 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 discriminator and the neural network. So its generator is we use the, for the prediction. And so, for example, we can use a generator to reprodu reproduce the image. And the discriminator, like a, you kind of like please, okay. Okay, I will judge. So, so this is the you. This is the uh, picture is generated by the produced by the generator. I will and the discriminator will compare this image with true image. So whether it's okay, it, uh, it's much each other. It's similar, and if not, it's completely different. They will say, okay, no, the generator is, generator is uh, uh, produce a very poor image. So you have to retrain in the generator. But if okay, I say, okay, training is stop. Okay. Um, and then, so basically, the, so this is a, for the image, we produce the image, but the, the Dr. Chen is the first time introduced this method for, for the special and temporary real-time prediction, use this method. So this, so basically this is a strategy of the uh, journal scan. So this is a generator, this is a discriminator. And so input could run the new perturbations in, give to the generator. And here is image or your, your, your flu dynamic futures is at a different time level. You can think about at a different time level or it's image, you think it's image. And then you can, so basically that input go to the, your generator and then generator will produce the image. 
Okay, this this uh, uh, the for example for example velocity field at a different time level, and then okay now this image we are go to the during the training process we are give to the general discriminator, and this is the two solutions: the velocity, for example, velocity at different time level, and they also give to the discriminator. So discriminator will compile the true results with a true result with the results from the generator. And if good, and they will say, okay, so it will be output from generator will be one. And then if we say this is completely different, this is completely different from true results. And so the results from, come from discriminator is zero, so no. So the generator is not good. So we are, we need to restart the training process again. So we have said, so basically they have the two convolutional neural network. One is for the generator, one is for the discriminator. And you can choose a different activation function for the, uh, for the different uh, convolutional layer. And so, this generator that, that at the generator for different, you know, this is at the different convolutional layer, and this is the discriminator convolution layer at the different convolutional layer. And as the neural network, if for the training, we need to def define the loss functions. So in this case, for the gap, it's the minimum and the maximum problem based on the close entropy loss functions. So it's this, the loss function is defined here, and it's the minimum and maximum problem. So this uh, discriminator is a uh, discriminator, it wants the maximum of the loss functions. And then if good, and so that will be, we try to reach it, the, you know, the output from the discriminator will close the one, and this will cl cl close to zero, and the discriminator generator wants the minimum of the functions. So we will be this we will be close to one. So and then you you have the balance. So optimal the discriminate data, the output should come right like this. And the p is the p is the okay. Well, I I forgot to define. So p is the the prob uh, probability distribution, uh, giving the data. The probability distribution of the phi, the solution, the phi, giving for the given data, and this is the uh, this is uh, the probability distribution of the phi, the, the of the phi given the the, the, the give, uh, data. So it's different. This is for the generator. This is for the data. It is phi t d is represent the measurement true results, and the phi is the represent the result from the generator. Okay, so this is the probability of the, uh, the result from the generator. So and then if we reach the optimal uh, uh, equilibrium, uh, equilibrium, and that means this probability distribution equal to this probability distribution. And then this will be reached to one or, one or the over two. So that's reached, you can see that it reached the last, the equilibrium. And all you can say is zero sum, a balance. So, and this procedure, so uh, for the for the GAN, you need a mini, uh, for the generator, you need, uh, for the discriminator, your maximum of this function, loss functions. So we cut to catch the probability of the data, uh, and then you know of the solutions uh, from the for, from the generator, and this is the generator. So for the generator, you try to hit the, you try to minimize of these lost functions, and to try to catch the probability of the the, the input data. So this aggregating for this gener the generator at the worst neural network, and you can use that for the writing the code. And now um, I want to reach the another issues. So if you want to use the machine learning neural network to for the 
uh, for the simulation, the special high resolution, special, special distribution, special and temporal distribution, you need to deal with a larger data set. So we need to introduce kind of the model reduction to deal with larger data set. And I will give some examples here. And so this learning process. So we want to learning process. We are to introduce the data, and uh, you introduce and so training data set. We introduce uh, the data, and also we deal with optimization process. And we have the, the we need to deal with large data. So we introduce the the model reduction technology. Here is the training data. The training oh, sorry, the training data could come from measurement, of course. If you have enough measurement, that's okay. But if you don't have enough measurement, may you can come some day, you can come from a physical model result and basically fit into the training data set. And then we introduce the model reduction technology into the training, uh, reduce the dimensional size of the data, and then go to the learning process. After the learning process, we get our training model. Okay, after training the model, so we, for, we, we want this model to uh, for the predictions for the unseen case. So we give the unseen input data, which is not included in the training data. And then we want to use this training model for the prediction, but also you can use the, you introduce the model reduction into the inside, and also, and then you predict the results. After you predict the results, and actually you can use the data simulation technology, combine it, and then further improve the accuracy of the model results. So I will, that will be in my next part. I will discuss that how to combine a data simulation with machine learning model. So for the, what's the model, you reduce the model, it projects the data from a high dimensional space onto the no dimensional space. So there's a number of the methods. For example, I think purple also, uh, also gonna, the computation methods, this method is very powerful for the linear case, for the reduction, model reductions. And another method is the auto-encode. Auto-encode is good for the both sides, is linear case and non-linear case. Actually, it's really powerful. I will give some example later. So here is the auto-encode. So auto-encode is that you have the larger, uh, high resolution image and as input, and then you go to the INCO and reduce this size in, in on the latent, latent layer. And then at least one to capture the key features at this image. So only, so we only capture the key features. And then afterwards you can decode and reproduce the image. And so the last function to find here is the difference between this image, true image, and then the, 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 result, the image produced by the, this neural network. And so that's a loss function. We are going to train in this neural network uh, to minimize of these loss functions. And the, but this problem is they have some issues is our fitting, as I said before, so it's a serious overfitting issues. So to resolve these issues, we can use introduce a variation out of the code methods. Our variation out of the code method is your no, instead of use this loss functions, you know it's a restrict loss functions just to compare exactly how they, the, the, the volume with the true data. And so we, we try to, this means the variation method is to introduce another new loss functions. It's a KL, the loss functions. So this, use this function, we can capture the, the probability distribution of image. So in this case, avoid our fitting and also very good for the generate the new case. 
now next step, I want to use that. So variation, uh, the variation organ code is good for the model reduction, for especially for the nonlinear uh, fluid dynamic systems. And then now I want to compile this method with the gap, generally at the worst neural network. And then see this, when they compile with the gap, it's a better repair the all the training and the image. And also avoid the, some issues in the original gap. For example, this, uh, you know, the model class, the problem in the gap. So the, this is really good to the combinations. This is the structure of the, the variation hybrid methods, the uh, variation ordering code compared with gap. So the, this is the encode. So we have the input mu, as I said, in, in, in boundary condition, initial conditions, and the background. And we have the, uh, the two solutions. And then we give the, the all is we are give to the, the encode generator. We call it generator or encode. Now we treat it as a generator. So first we reduce the dimensional size of this input data. And all now we are again in the middle. So again, we will be treated in the, in the very low dimensional size, uh, space. So, so this is discriminated data. And then we to judge it whether it's a latent variable state and with a true, uh, that's true latent variable and with the, with the, 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 the from here, you know, generator come from generator latent variable, compare each other. So we can judge it and training the whole systems. And then afterwards, you get your training data, and then you can get the decode. So recover from no space, the solution from no space onto the non, original high dimensional space. So, so we construct the, the image. So we can use this whole system to predict the fluid dynamic problem in the future, in a different time level. Now I give one example. And uh, this example is flu has the cylinder. So flu come from in, 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 in flow, if it come from the left side and the pass the cylinder and the goes from the left, right side, and now we want to training this. The original we can use the, the training data we uh, is generated by our uh, physical model, and then we can see that then we can we give the variable the region wide of the, uh, give the region of the in that velocity from point four to the point six, and uh, based on the Gaussian distribution here. And from these Gaussian distributions, we randomly choose 200, uh, uh, 200 data set input in that input of velocity. And then we run our physical model to generate a 200 data set for our training and validation purpose. And then also we can choose, we, we, we want to test this, whether it's the number of data sets that will affect your, your, your training model, the results. A machine learning model uh, prediction results. So we choose the 200 data set. We also choose the 100 data set. And also we choose the 40 data set from the mean uh, in this case. And then we have the, so we have the, the 200, the 100, the 400. So we compile it. So these are our results for the results of prediction results, ADO from our predict results. So you can see if the smaller data set, you have a higher ADO, you, uh, the ADO volume. And then if you increase the number of the data set and the accuracy of the prediction results increase. So this is the results at a different time level. And this on the left side is a result from our machine learning model, and on the right side is a result from the physical model. So we compile it. So at this is a different time level, and you can see it's machine learning model, it captured almost the detail of the, the fluid dynamic features, especially around the cylinder. And you can see this, it's, you can see here it's captured very well. Actually. And of course, there is some difference. 
But however, you can see, you know, if you, you run the original model, the CPU time is up, up, about the two hours. And then if you run that model, you get, uh, I say the online prediction after training process. And then if you use the machine learning for the, the simulations, only take less than minutes, uh, one minute. So it's a very fast model, but keep the uh, reasonable accuracy if we compare original results from the physical model. So this is another case. Uh, it's another case. So it, let me change it. So this is the water clubs. The blue re represents the, the water, and then this uh, blue, uh, the air, this represents the air. So this is the multi-phase case, okay? This is a multi-phase. I want to use our training model and to, for the prediction. So this is how to train it. So this is the fluid dynamic future really depend on the initial the shape of the water. Okay, this is the water. So now we give it a different uh, type, a different uh, shape of the initial of water and the, the setup of the training data set. So you can see it's, uh, this have the, we set up the 45 case and have with so the different uh, initial shape of the water. And then we run our physical model to generate a 45 data set. And we use the 42 data set as a training data. And then we choose these three case as a validation data sets. So this is our results. Our left is the result from a machine learning model. And the on the right side is result from physical model at the different time level. And again, you can see our machine learning model can catch the detail of the fluid dynamic futures. And also the, 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 if you compare with the, if you see the coordinate uh, in the correlation, see it's really quite high. So this is arrow, you can see this arrow is at the time level point of two, it's very small here, but here it's at point of six, six five, it's actually uh, the big arrow is here. And so basically it's quite a it's small arrow, but a very fast, very, very fast model. And again, we compare our results at the different locations. We compare it, there's a different location. You can see this result is come from these locations. And then the, it's the solid line represent the results from physical model and the dashed line represent the results from the machine learning model. You can see it's much very well. And the, this, point, this one is come from this point, but there's a slight different here, but still it's very good results here. And, Okay, I, now we go to the real time, uh, realistic applications. And this is actually, this one is the, it's the, the we use the user order model, machine learning model with the with application to the Chinese, uh, the air pollution prediction in, China, in China. This the big area is, you can see it's 1,000 1, kilometer by the 1,000 kilometers in horizontal in the vertical, we have the, in the 20, Hit, uh, 20 kilometer. I think we have the, I think it's, as I remember, it's having 11 layer around that vertical. And, and there, the CPU, the CPU uh, computational period is 100 hours and the time level, uh, time step size is uh, six, uh, three hours. So, and then this, uh, this uh, region is, we have the 100 uh, power plant around these areas. So pollutant release from these power stations. And so we want to simulate this case uh, in use our machine learning model. So we training our model with the, uh, we, we, we first we training our model and then reduct it. So you can see this model after training, we predict that it, it's, a, it's quite a good prediction, but also let me, uh, 
So it's quite a good, uh, you, know, you can see it's catch the more details. It's if compared with the results from physical model, physical model need uh, three hours uh, CPU time and here is the second to get the results. And uh, so this is how we set up of the, the, how we set up our training data. So training data, we have, uh, for example, we have the 10 and then we have the, the we have the source from the, different the locations and we give the different the in intensity for the emission intensity uh, intensity and then we do generate it and then training the model and again good results is okay and reasonable good actually and uh, so another uh, example is the flooding predictions so this is the damage case Okay, this area is a big area, it's again, it's a big area. And this, we, this is the open areas, especially around this area, it's have the, the people living here, it's, it's high, the population density here. And uh, so this is a sea, and this is a coastline. And then it's, it's in, in, in 1960, and the October is a big flooding come because the storm surges come from the in, incoming wave and then it's storm surges and then flooding happened at this the open areas. So it's it, because it's often it happened. So we now we want to, we see how we can we train our machine learning model to predict. So the, what happened in the flooding here. So, you, you train in the model, you, you have a give a, diff, a, a different uh, the incoming wave and then train our model. And then, and then you can see, see how what happened in the, in the how the flooding in the, happened in the, this open area. But then we use our training the machine learning model for the prediction. So give the unseen case, for example, give the different the incoming wave. And then we can we did predict Probably, you know, the, what happened here. So this is our domain and the mesh. And then we use the 100 years return incoming wave as our prediction, uh, as our validation case. So how, this is how we set up our model. So this is the incoming wave uh, for the 100 years return incoming wave. In, uh, and then based on that, we, we use the Gaussian distributions and then we, gen we generate the, our the in different income we would add about the 15. And then we use the 13 of them as the training data. And then we use the two of them as validation data. And here it is. So uh, the, our uh, the generator, so, after training, sorry, yeah. Right. So after training, this is generator with our machine learning model, and so this is input. Why it keep changing? Okay, this is the the on the on the left is the input. Is the income? Sorry, let me change it back. So this is the incoming wave, and then the solution from previous level and. Sorry, some issues here. Uh, let, let, let me change the point back. I think it's point back. I think some issue is that. Okay, um, so this is the input. It's the solution from, where, where is Uh, keep changing. So solution from previous time level plus incoming wave, and then you go to input. And why is automatically changing the pages? Uh, okay, here. And then we can go through our machine learning model and for the predictions. And this is our prediction results at different time levels. And you can see on the left, is the result from machine learning model and on the middle is result from the physical model and the on the right is also between the, the, the results from between the models. So you can see, especially here, you can see, you can see we, 
uh, we cut the most of the, 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 uh, the details, but here you still have some arrow here. Uh, oh, actually here, it should be left, it should be the physical model. Here it should be the machine learning model. There is some big arrow here and some arrow here, but the rest the area is quite good. And this area is because it, it has a lot of a complex building. I think that caused the error in the machine learning model. And then we compare our model with the, you know, further compare with the different detector. And then we can see some results, it's, it basically in general, the, the results is much quite well with each other. And then you can see it's, it's some error here, but still it's good, it's quite good. And then, uh, Another result is the, another application is the machine learning. Uh, we, we use machine learning model for the ozone prediction in whole China. Whole China. So here is we use the, it's a, we use, we try to predict the, the high spatial distribution. So here is the mesh is about the, uh, in horizontal is uh, uh, 50 kilometer by the 50 kilometers. And then, uh, and then it's the, the, the period is the 2000, 2000 uh, the data set is 2030 to the 2019. We use the 2000, uh, 2018, uh, uh, 13 to the 2016 as a training data. And then rest was for the uh, prediction and the validation purpose. So this is the whole thing. And we choose this is the result for the, we choose the different season. So this is summer. And uh, uh, why is it summer, why is the, oh, uh, this is the, the, why is the winter? So winter is have the more stronger the ozone concentration, have high concentration, ozone concentrations. And in the uh, in summer, and in winter have no ozone concentration. So that's why we, we choose the two season for the predictions. And here we have some comparison. So we use the different, uh, we use the different uh, machine learning methods and the compile with uh, the analysis data. The analysis data is the physical model plus the data simulation results. So basically the physical model plus the data simulation and then general it's real analysis data. So in this area, we about is 1,400 uh, 1, the data at this, at the uh, money, you know, the data uh, at this area. So, so basically you, when you run the feeding model, it assimilates this data into the, uh, into the model, and then you get your real analysis data. So this is the real analysis data. With, now we compare with our results from our machine, different machine learning model, and then can see it's actually catch the high uh, ozone concentration where they were at this area because it's really a, a popula population, a dense popula population here. And then we can further we compare our machine learning results with the physical result, model results. And then you can see that uh, with the op operation. So the, 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 the black dot is the measurement. Okay, and then it's uh, the the orange one is the real analysis data, and the blue line is you can see blue line is physical model results, and then is uh, the the original one and the the yellow one is the result from our machine learning model, and you can see if this method the the no, the, the Origin wise, and then basically is yellow. The, this uh, variation or ordering code plus GAN and plus ASTM method can cut it close the the measurement. It's much better, and it's actually much better than physical model as well. So it's really uh, so it's different methods have different accuracy, but you know, actually, we would think this method is better. Now I want to go to the second part, how we compare with our machine learning model with data simulations. So in the last part, in the last uh, few days in this week, 
we know we know a lot of the data simulation technology, for example, latching and the 3D war and 4D war joint methods, especially yeah, yeah, common filter methods and the particle methods, particle filter methods, I haven't put here, but the particle filter methods. So it's a list of data simulation methods. Can we compile our data simulation method and machine learning methods to improve, to approve the accuracy of the physical model or the machine learning model? Or we use uncertainty quantifications because the machine learning model is very fast. And so if we compile with the uh, reduce uh, you compare uh, you you compare with adjoin the model and you can very fast for uncertainty quantifications for the optimal controls and also we can use that method for the optimal uh, pick up the optimal the, uh, measurements. I will say that if I get the time I'll touch that. And also we can, yeah and so we are can was faster real time predictions. Okay. So the, I want to say is here is the physical dynamic systems, whatever is very general. So M is your nonlinear dynamic model systems and the model, the epsilon is L from your model, okay? This is the results. So basically it's the, this is the dynamic model, the Y is the data variable and the epsilon is noise. And uh, there are three ways we can combine data simulation and the machine learning to these systems. First one, so here is the physical model, your physical model, okay? And so here is the noise, noise, we, so we can use the data simulation, introduce the measurement into the physical model and then correct this error, noise, reduces noise. So basically, they, you can think about this is data simulation systems and to use data simulation system the, to correct these uh, errors. And uh, so uh, we can introduce machine learning methodology into the data simulation systems. Like uh, as the first day, it's uh, Dr. Uh, Professor Harold and uh, the Dr. Uh, one is when the shoe star yesterday say that they used the, the machine learning model replace the three D uh, model systems and then get a really good results, very fast and even high accurate, uh, high accurate, uh, you know, higher accurate, higher accurate in the higher accurate than the the four D R model or the three D R model uh, system data simulation model. So this is the first methodology, how you compare with uh, data simulation and uh, with uh, machine learning, introduce machine learning is faster and uh, of course maybe accurate, uh, we need to test it. And another method, uh, so this is a method, so they also at least uh, another people doing the uh, list of other people doing similar way uh, the work. So they introduced the machine learning into the data simulation and all the EN cable than the there for the data simulation. And so this basically is the physical and this is the common filter methods. So it's the, this we can demonstrate the common filter method is the co covariance from the background and the covariance from the measurement and these common filter methods. So basically you need uh, uh, you need to run this model and the uh, model and the given different number of sample and then you can get the, uh, the analytic results improve the accuracy from the physical model. And so this is how to do it. I think that is, uh, so this is the physical model results and this, this is the measurement and we as the input and the, into the neural network and from neural network, you have the output, this analysis data, uh, analysis re analytical results after the data simulation neural network, or you can say this data simulation systems, this, you can treat this neural network as a data simulation system. And then meanwhile, you can get the covariance for this assemble on the, this analytical results. And so this output, is the, yeah, it's analytical results and plus the covariance. 
error coherence. So this is the first method. And then is another example you can introduce this machine learning method to compare with the ENKF. And then uh, Professor Corrado, they use the, is the uh, 3D one, and then here is compared with um, ENKF method. It's very fast and as well. And, if, and the one is this use the original full ENKF method, and the get, result to get from the full ENKF method. And this is reduce the machine learning uh, compared with model reductions, the EN kind of method, you can see it's a, no, you can you can you cannot see much difference between them. So it's good and fast. And the second is people introduce, so this is the number of people are working on that. People introduce the machine learning into the parameterization scheme in the physical model, for example, subgrid the model, and then use the machine learning model replace existing subgrid parameterization scheme and then speed up the physical model procedures. So this is another way how to introduce machine learning into the physical model. And this is my, our, my focus today is the introduce the Machine learning model, uh, model in both ways. Why? You know, not only into the data simulation system and also introduces the machine learning model. So here, original in the past, the here is a physical model. Now we use the machine learning model replace the physical model. Of course, for machine learning model, you you also you also have the noise. So noise, how to correct it? We introduce a data simulation method. So data simulation, machine learning, and then it's a machine learning model. So you can see from here, it's, it's purely depend on the machine learning model without the physical model. It's the, you can also think about the purely depend on data set, data driving model. Okay. So it's whether we can use that in the future, we can use whether we can use this model for the real time prediction. You know, it's fast, but the request question is very accurate. It is, it is accurate, so we need to do some test. So the pr principle behind this is here. We saw this picture before. So original here is the result from the physical model as input to the new data simulation system, the neural network. And here is the measurement. And then you can, this you can treat it as the machine learning based, machine learning based data simulation. And now instead of result coming from physical model, result, uh, physical model, we use the machine learning based model. So this is the basic machine learning based model. You can you can say you can you can say it's a CAN and the machine it's GAN. I said uh, a machine learning in my talk, and then also you can use the LSTM methods and whatever you use is the training the machine learning model, and this is for the real time predictions, and then get as input uh, out the input from a previous time level and this output at next time level. And then as an input as this here, we want to correct, we want to increase accuracy from the, from this solution, uh, for this solutions. So we as input uh, into the data uh, simulation systems, bring the data and through the neural network and there you get a more accurate result output. So this is the data simulation, um, the machine learning model plus data simulation based machine learning model. I give the two examples. One example is the is uh, is the is for the prediction for the PM two two point five concentration in the one the one uh, uh, mantle the detector is in Beijing. So input is the PM uh, two point five concentration at previous time. And also have plus methodology data wind speed, temperature, humidity, pressure as the input, and so this is the input. And output will be the uh, P, uh, concentration of the PM two point five at the next time, few time level. 
And this the training data set is to, from the 2013 to 2015, and the validation is the 2016, and the two, and then the publication is 2007. And the methodology we hear, we uh, machine learning method we use the, is, uh, is the uh, ASTM and, and the ENKF plus ENKF. Okay. So we can see here, this is the, uh, so basically the, the right line is the purely predicted result from the, from the, from the machine learning model ASTM without the data simulation. You can see this, uh, you know, the big arrow through the, uh, along the time period. And then we want to correct it, increase accuracy. So we bring the data, so this is the dot uh, the measurement, and then we bring data here, we use the ENKF method. We use the 20 uh, uh, assembled members. And then you can see, and then you can see this line is the results when we introduce the data simulation technology and then introduce the data, and then you can see when they close to the measurement, improve the accuracy of the machine learning model results. And here, uh, and the second example is the Lorraine 97, and it's one dimensional with simple amount. Here we have the R is to have the number, the variable is the 40, F we choose the 12, the two results we run the physical model and then with the, the time period of 200 MTUs and the time, this is the time step. And then we use the first 180 as a training and the rest for the validation of predictions. And here is a result, you can see this is the training period and this is the validation period. You can see here, okay, you can see without uh, this is the the true data is the true result is this the black line and the orange and the blue line represent the different methods. But you can see no matter method you use, there are some error but in the predicting period. So we want to introduce a data simulation to improve accuracy. And now it's the results. So we can uh, uh, at every time level. For the, this time, we, we use the data simulation technology and CAF and introduce the me measurement, improve the accuracy, uh, the, uh, it reduce the error in the, the, the solutions. And then we use that as input and do the predict. You can see, and it's much better than before. Again, and then we reach the correlation, the coefficient is eight, eight about 0.8. And, here is result, the input, we use the data simulation and uh, reduce the error and output, again, we use the introduce the measurement and improve the, uh, it reduce the error, you can see it's much, much better, very, very close to each other. So no matter the method you choose to do, it's good. So I just see how much time we left. And so I think last bit, I want to introduce it adaptive, adaptive observation for optimal sensor locations. So we can see we machine learning, we introduce a machine learning model for the rapid response for real time prediction. And for we introduce data simulation combined with data simulation to improve accuracy of the model results. But question is, can you, you know, your, can you guarantee your data measurement is good? Some, you know, most of the, sometimes your, your measurement, the quality of your measurement is very poor. And also sometimes you also miss the data. So we want to introduce the, the good quality of data into the model, uh, into the data simulation system, improve accuracy. And if you introduce the poor quality data and actually, Instead of improve accuracy of the model result, actually we will reduce the accuracy. So that's the last topic I want to touch it. So there is a, a one method we call the goal-based adaptive observation method for optimal this the data. So basically we want to use this method to tell you where 
you collect the data, you know, every, if you want to collect the data, sometimes very, very expensive. And so you use this method, they want to tell you where and when you should collect the data. In, in a big area, you, 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 you very big area, you, it's not sure you, where you should really collect the data. And the data collector, after the data collector can really uh, you know, introduce the, the physical model can improve, improve actually uh, this, uh, of model results is significantly. And so now it's basically this method is the adjoined sensitivity methods. Adjoined sensitivity method, adjoined method is really good for the optimal control sensitivity analysis, but very, very, very expensive. And also it's a very, um, what I say, it's a very, it's difficult to implement the adjoined model. And so if you compare with reduce the model, you, you know, if you, implement your adjoined model at the no space, uh, sp not dimensional space will, will be fast. And actually in the future, if you use the machine learning model to generate your adjoined model, I think that will be good, will be good methods as well. So we use this method to pre pre provide because do the sensitivity analysis, run the model back forward. And then it will produce a pre provide the very important map, the error covariance of time and space. And then you will pick up the where is the large of a gradient, you know, where you can say how the sensitivity of the, you know, this uh, your solution sensitivity with your data. So basically that's an important map. And then you based on that, you can choose where you should need to put your sensor and then collect your data. So you can use that, provide the optimal sensor, uh, you know, optimal sensor, uh, new, the sensor network and uh, for the measurements. And I just want to give you an example. And here is the one dimensional, okay? This is the one dimensional. Uh, and along this direction is the time step, but it's a time theory. So the, basically it's the, it's the uh, direction diffusion equations. We run the model, so this is a blue tent, for example, and we are driven by the uh, wind velocity field and to these locations. And at this time level, at, at this time level, you can see, if you have the data, if you simulate the data collected at these locations, do you think will improve the accuracy of the prediction the result at this location? I don't think so. So basically, if you collect the data at this point, it will improve the accuracy at this uh, solution, at these locations. And so basically this numerical uh, solutions where the sensitivity with respect to the measurement at this point. So that is the core point of the adjoined sensitivity analysis, the approach, how to find identified optimal locations and uh, the, for the optimal sensor. So this is one example, it's ocean example, yes. And in this case, uh, so the, the, we can see at these areas, we have a big arrow. So now we want to introduce our adjoined sensitivity methods to find where to connect the data. And here it is results. So there's the right important locations you should connect the data. And so the, the, the basically is right now, so we, we can, we can, now we collect this data from these optimal locations and then we simulate this data into your model. And you can see here, just demonstrate how good it is. So basically if we randomly choose the data from this area, randomly choose the data from this area. And then you can see this is the arrow. This arrow not, is not decrease, but if you choose the, me the measurement okay. from this, Optimal Dr. locations. Dr. Fanzi? Decreased. Fast. Dr. Fanzi? Yeah, quick. Uh, uh, we are 10 finished. minutes. Okay. So, okay. 
So basically, you can see this arrow after you pick up the measurement at the optimal locations, and the, the arrow decreased. And so I think last slide. So this is the whole point. So today, and uh, lecture is include machine learning model. We can use the machine learning model to capture the spatial and temporal distribution of fluid dynamic features. And we can use that for real time prediction, but we need to introduce the data simulation technology to improve accuracy of the um, machine learning model results. And uh, we can use that for the uncertainty quantification and operable control. And in the future, uh, it's a big question is, may, may we, can we use the machine learning model for replace the, instead of the new physical model, we can we use the machine learning model for real-time prediction in future. And uh, so you have to sort out of the issues here. So the accuracy and uh, beyond the training periods and the bring the data simulation, uh, and actually more popular methods is, actually we don't think it purely depend on machine learning. We can introduce some physical information in the lost functions. We call the hybrid machine learning and the physical modeling. And also it combined with data simulation and the, and the use of the model reduction technology to further speed up your simulations. This is a list of uh, reference. And okay, thank you. And I will give some more question. Yeah, give some mark. Question. Thank you. I look at the, any question. The, uh, maybe I quit the share, and so I can. Yeah, there is a, some question in the chat. And uh, some issue with that, so I need to quit, stop here, and so I can see the chair. Is there any question here? There, there are. There are questions in the chat. Okay, let me look at. <laughs> uh, Where is the generator here? Okay, let me go back oh, quite a lot. Yes, there um, is a, <laughs> there's other questions before. In the block? Oh, generator, okay, I'm, I get it. Generator is the, generator is the, uh, auto encode and decode compared together is the generator. So it's the, yeah, you're right. You know, we, I didn't show that. So basically the discriminator is in the, in the, in the middle and the generator after the training generator will be the, the encode and decode compared together is, is, is the generator. Uh, Another question is, let me see. Uh, uh, no, in training, no, you are in training policy uh, for the different, oh, no, the parameters in the training is the same or different for each? Uh, that parameter beta uh, multiplied by the weights. It's a trial by the weight. And uh, so, at, uh, yeah, it's different for the different uh, nutrient. It's and different. Which is the interval of the variation of this parameter? Uh, sorry, I can't. Uh, this parameter beta. There is a, a, an interval for the, this value could be variant. I mean, I don't know, um, from zero to one or to a hundred, what, what else? Oh, we need a scale first. Oh, really? Yeah, we need a scale first. Yeah, we need a scale first. But so numerical experimentation will have some theoretical limits. You mean the, the solutions? The, no, the no, no. I mean, uh, uh, to calibration this beta parameter, how can you do that? Um, how can you identify the numerical variable for this parameter? 
uh, discriminator or discriminator is the we judge always that you mean a discriminator no no calibration how can you compute the numerical value of that parameter uh, let me show okay. that maybe we show your uh, i'm not catching your your second should we show that uh, screen first and um but uh, well, one um one uh, equation you are using this w uh, uh let me show what? the screen so, first and uh, yeah and, and, and the uh, beta parameter okay sure let me show that it's uh which i'm not sure catch you um, Yeah. No, no, no. It's one equation that, uh, for example, and uh, okay. Uh, Is it here? Uh, no, no. It's one equation that you were. No, no, no. D just go, 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 go ahead in the slides here. Yeah, yeah. I don't think it's here. Let me quick look. Okay. Is it here? No. no. Let me do here, that. Here, I, here, here. Okay, like okay, okay, okay. One is back. This one? No, no, no. No, no, no. Go, go back. Here. Here. No. Uh, I have. Yeah. No, one, one. One more. It's like 18, I think. No, uh, no, 18. This, that's, that's one. This one? And so there's sigma, sigma uh, parameter here. Yeah. Sigma is the active function choose for the different convolution layer. Different convolution layer, you have a different, uh, you, you have a different, uh, uh, you can choose a different uh, active function function. Okay, I got it. Uh, I so this understand. is uh, oh, basically J, yeah. J uh, represents the convolutional layer, different convolutional layer. All right. Okay. Thank you. Okay, sir. Let's, let's stop it. Okay. Let me stop it, and then I go back. The uh, go back again. Uh, another one is flooding, right? Uh, uh, okay. Uh, the fluid. The fluid, uh, flu, uh, uh, yeah, is the flooding application. That there is some region that is, uh, is not good prediction. And so can I identify it by using uh, uncertainty quantification? Yes, for sure. Yes, we okay. can do that. Yeah, no, no, oh. for sure that, of course. Uh, and ozone concentration for the partial different equation model, uh, uh, the chemical reaction consider it. Uh, uh, no, no, for this case, no, just uh, purely the advice uh, confusion. Okay, so just dispersion. Yeah, yes, yes, no not really. But uh, if you, uh, because we run the model with our model, fluidity, fluidity, no, have uh, currently, okay, in, at that time, we don't have the chemical reaction in the model inside. But if you run the model, um, we, if you run the model, the physical model with the uh, chemical model inside and the generated data, and then that means implied that you are, you are training data have the chemical reaction. But for our case, no. The analysis is calculated by the new, new, new general collector and it's calculated on the, uh, on the computation of model grid, model grid. A model grid. That's yeah that's, on the model grid. Okay, on the grid. okay. Yeah, model and grid. so the, the the observation is dropped on the the the, the model grid. grid yes, model grid. Model grid. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Uh, are there some uh, other comments, questions for Professor Fonzi? 
Anyway, that that was one amazing talk uh, with comments with uh, many many results and application. <laughs> uh, thank you, thank you a lot for that. And, thank you uh, for. I, I'm very uh, happy that you show us all of this very good talk. Uh, if not, I would like to thank everyone, uh, our audience here to, to agree to, to be with us in this short course on data simulation. And uh, because all the, the, the idea is to provide some uh, advanced, uh, 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 not so advanced, but also so uh, uh, very advanced uh, schemes for data simulation, including the new ones. And uh, also the idea is to show some different applications for this very important tool. I mean, data uh, simulation, uh, probably you are going to use in different, many other applications. Uh, but, and then the people are right now, not always realize that how powerful could be this, 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 this tool. And so thank you all to, to, to join us in this short course on data simulation. And in particular, I would like to say thank you for our speakers. That is a thank very, you for, very, yeah, everyone. Very, it's very, like, very thank you, good Horto. It's very really hard work to organize this. Thank you. Yeah. And that's it. Have a have a good time. And uh, uh, the, the, the yeah, the slide is going to, is going to be presented in a near future. Also, the videos of our this all presentation here is going to be available in, on the internet. Also, thank you all. And uh, have a, a good day and have a, a good weekend. Yeah, we finished this this week during for this our course. Thank you. Thank you. You want to say something? Uh, uh, well, Professor I just Kong? want to say thank you, everyone. You know, to attending on this course and the and the all the speaker is wonderful. To the, the 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 speaker in the last few, few days is very good. Uh, very good. Wonderful. It's nice. Thank you, everyone. Yeah, this is a kind of marathon in, in terms of data simulation. And yeah. so, <laughs> uh, but I'm happy that, that, you, that we have an opportunity to, 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 to meet uh, with uh, different uh, experts on data simulation, bringing to us yeah. some very important applications too. Yes, yes, actually, it is. The, uh, there are some one, one question is, is there any certifications? Yes, the horror uh, professor horror are prepared. We are sent, I think, all the certification to everyone. Yeah, so okay, that. people, uh, take care and have a good weekend again. Thank you all. Okay, thank you.